number 4a we have four compounds which of these compounds will not produce a color change when heated with sodium dichromate so essentially they're asking which of the four compounds will not be oxidized so let's take a look at the four compounds per propanol proper one or proper one or will be oxidized it will be oxidized to an acid so that's not the answer for proper two or it will be oxidized to a ketone propanol aldehyde will be oxidized to an acid right. and d propanone propanone itself is a ketone it will not be oxidized further by sodium dichromate so d will not produce a color change when heated with sodium dichromate solution which pair of compounds will you expect to have a singly charged peak mass charge at 29 so let us draw the structures out for a proper one or So this is proper one or proper two or the hydroxyl group will be on the second carbon so let's create fragments of these two molecules first and see what what possible combinations we could have We're aiming for 29 so here right if we were to break the molecule in this region we will have 12 12 24 29 for this fragment and for this fragment we will have 12 16 plus 3 we have 31 for proper two or right, it's, it could break either one, it's the same. So if it break over here, you will have 15. Here will be 12 times 2 plus 16 plus 5. We will have 45. So propanol might give a peak at 29, but proper two or we do not have that combination. So this is out. Right. That means B is also out because B listed proper two or as one possibility. Let's look at proper now, the aldehyde. Three carbon aldehyde. And then proper known, we might as well draw it now. The ketone. Right, let's try to create fragments from these two molecules. If you were to break it here, we will get Right, just like here we will get 29 and this fragment will give us 12 plus 1 plus 16 also 29 proper known right, breaking here we will have 15 and for here we will have 43 so Proper now does give us peaks at 29, but not proper known. Alright, so we have the combination. Proper 1 all will have a 29. 
and proper null could have 29 either from this fragment or the fragment on the right. So D is the answer. For part C, which compound will you expect to give a peak at M over E? 31. Okay, we can make use of the, the structures that we drawn earlier in for part B. Looking for peak at 31. And we see that over here, right? Proper one or will give us that possibility. So, right. We can also use this for, for part C. For part D, we are given an infrared spectrum and we are supposed to figure out which of these four unknowns could have provided us with this reading. So let's look at first of all proper null, proper one or proper one or has the alcohol OH group. So if it was proper null, proper one or there should be a broad peak at this region, the 700, 3200. Right, maybe somewhere about here, but right, we do not have such a broad peak on our reading. So what it means that is there is no alcohol group in our unknown. So we eliminated proper one off. And using the same argument, we could also eliminate the next option proper two off because it also has the alcohol group, which cannot be found here. So A and B are out. Proper null. Proper null. Let's look at this region, the 2700 region. There should be a, a peak. So 2700, 29, 28, 27. Right, it's about here. You go to trace up. Right, there's no peak in this region. So we eliminated the possibility that it could be an aldehyde. Right. This could be due to the CH bonds. So it could be a bit misleading. Right. So I use 2700 to make it clearer. If there's no peaks at the 2700 region, then there's no aldehydes. So we also eliminated aldehydes as a possibility. We are down to our answer that is a ketone. Right. A ketone with a carbonyl group just like aldehydes will have a peak at this wavelength or wave number that's indicated here. Number five, Maxwell Boltzmann curve. What happens when the temperature is decreased? So a typical curve We will have the number of molecules or the portion of molecules with a certain energy. And then this is the energy. And the curve might look like this for any given temperature. If we were to have a lower temperature, the distribution will look like this. Right. So what happens if we were to focus on the peak? the peak when the temperature reduces the peak moves to the left and the peak actually is further up so the peak is higher and further to the left for a lower temperature Number six, equilibrium between hydrogen and carbon dioxide. So what effect will it have on the rate and on the yield? So the changes that we introduce decrease in temperature. So 
when the temperature is reduced right, the particles will have less energy overall so the rate of reaction will decrease right, this is independent of the equilibrium and all that temperature de decreases energy re decreases the rate will decrease so it could be B or C then let's look at the yield when the temperature decreases the system will counteract to favor the exothermic direction right because you want to produce more heat so temperature drops exothermic direction is favored if you look at the information here this is plus 40 it means that this direction is forward direction is endothermic the backward direction is exothermic so when temperature drops favoring the exothermic reaction means it favors the backward reaction Favoring the backward reaction means that our yield of carbon monoxide will be dropping. Right, it will actually form more carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So, decrease in yield of CO. Six. Part B, same equilibrium, but now the change is increase in pressure. Right, when we have an increase in pressure, the particles, the gas particles get closer together. In other words, actually the concentration of the particles increase concentration of the gas increase and therefore the rate increases right? they have more chances to collide so the rate will increase with increase in pressure it's either A or B and then let's look at the equilibrium when there's an increase in pressure the system will react to favor the side that has less gas molecule you will try to relieve the pressure so looking at the equilibrium we have two moles of gas on the left side we have two moles of gas on the right side so actually there will be no change in any direction right if if pretending there was only one mole here on the left two moles on the right it will actually shift to the left it will shift to the place where there are less gas molecules but here the number of molecules on either side are the same so there will be no shift in the equilibrium there will be no change in the yield of carbon monoxide Number seven, what is produced when magnesium burns in air? Right, there are two main gases in air. We have oxygen and then we have nitrogen. So magnesium will form magnesium oxide when it reacts with oxygen and magnesium also form magnesium nitride when it reacts with the nitrogen. So C is our answer. Number eight, what happens to the solubilities of the hydroxides and the sulfates as we ascend, right? Ascended, not going down the group. So we have magnesium, calcium, barium, and so on. As we go up the group, this is more of a recall question. As we go up the group, right, the solubility of the hydroxide decreases. Sometimes we remember it easier when we go down the group. 
the solubility as you go down the group increases. Right, so the reverse if you are going up the group. So solubility decreases. For sulfates is the opposite. Right? As you go up the group, the solubility increases. Right, the solubility of the hydroxides and the sulfates follow an opposite trend. So we have B.